Hi everyone, praise the Lord again. Welcome back. We are looking at the book of Titus. We are now at chapter 2 and verse 11. And I hope that you are, you know, you are getting blessed. Let's look at verse 11 and, and you know, all the way to, to the end. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Okay? So this is a very profound scripture, a profound verse. That the grace of God has appeared and it offers salvation. This grace of God offers salvation to all people. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you are from. It doesn't matter where you were born, the kind of family you come from, the kind of religion you subscribe to. The grace of God offers salvation to you through his son, Jesus Christ. And, and, and you know whether it doesn't matter whether you're black or white, uh, whether you're in Europe, Africa, uh, South America, wherever you are, the grace of God offers salvation to all people, old, young, children, everyone. There is this opportunity that we have been given. There is this chance that we have to accept this salvation, to receive this salvation that has been offered to us by the grace or through the grace of our God. And so wherever you are watching me from, I want to ask you, have you received the grace of salvation? Have you received Jesus into your life? Is Jesus walking with you? Are you walking with Jesus? Or are you still at that point in your life where you are undecided or you want to say, okay, Jesus is Lord and, and you want to accept him? Or are you at a place where you are doubting this faith? Okay, be encouraged because the offer of salvation is for everyone. It's for you. You know, you may be feeling as if you're discouraged. You may be feeling like you've done or committed a few sins here and there. And maybe you feel like you are not uh, you are not qualified to receive this salvation. But this gift is also available for you. Even right now, you may have bumped into me uh, through your YouTube or your podcast and you just bumped into my, into my channel. And, and I want to ask you, and then you, f you hear me asking you this question. Are you born again today? Receive Jesus into your life for the grace is there. All right. And verse 12 uh, says, it teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. Now, this grace of God that has given us um, this Salvation teaches us to say no to ungodliness. Now, you know the reason why I, I, I love this book is because it, is, it speaks to our generation. It speaks to the challenges that we are facing now. It is very hard for people, some people, to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. It's very difficult. And there's a time I was teaching uh, about a topic that was called eternity in perspective and how we must live lives with eternity in mind. That every time you're thinking about your life, think about where you will spend eternity. Because eternity is the most important time, the most important place you will ever be is eternity. You will live forever. You will have uh, this chance to exist without the fear of death, to exist without the fear of sickness. And, and one of the things that will really enable us to enjoy eternity is the ability that we have on earth to say no to ungodliness and worldly pleasures. This ability to say no to ungodliness has been given to everyone without limit. It is available to all people. And that's what Paul is telling Titus. That for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us this grace that is available to everyone teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. Therefore, there is no excuse that we can give to God for giving in to worldly passions. There is no excuse we can give to God for saying yes to ungodliness. And we all know the ways of the ungodliness, okay? Or the ways of worldly passions. But we are asked that this grace is available. So we are asked to say no to it. This grace gives us the ability to say no. And eternity you will enjoy eternity, your eternal life, based on your ability today on this earth to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions. 
to say no to adultery, your ability to say no to stealing, to say no to corruption, to say no to drunkenness, to say no to fornication, to say no to all these things, the ability that you have has been given to you and has been made available to all of us in the same measure. Therefore, we shall have no excuse when we stand before God. So it gives us the ability to say no to worldly passions, ability to live self-controlled lives, and the ability to have upright and godly lives in this present age. In this age where sin is more exalted than righteousness. In this age where sin is justified more than righteousness is, the Lord is giving us this opportunity. While we wait for the blessed hope, we are on this earth to wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we have been given the ability to say no to this ungodliness, no to sin, no to these things, as we wait in this present age, as we wait for the blessed hope and the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. This is what we have been given. And then, and then uh, uh, Paul finishes this chapter saying, These then are the things you should teach. Encourage and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. So Paul goes on to, uh, to encourage uh, Titus and tell him, you know what, keep doing these things. These are the things I want you to teach. These are the things you should teach. Encourage people and rebuke with all authority. So encourage with all authority and rebuke with all authority. Do not let anyone despise you. The reason why Paul talks about uh, Titus being despised is because Titus was very young and he's addressing very old people. Uh, you know, people who are older than him, people who have more life experiences than him. And sometimes when you are young and God calls you into ministry, sometimes it's very difficult to be able to, do, uh, to, to run the ministry because of the older people. And sometimes you feel as if they despise you. Sometimes you feel as if you despise yourself. You feel you are, uh, sometimes you feel as if you're not qualified to do ministry work because of age. But I want to encourage you, my friends, if you're young and you have been called when you are young, please remember that God is the one who gives you the strength to be able to do this work. You don't do it by your strength. You do it by the strength of the Holy Spirit. So do not despise your age. Do not despise yourself. And I remember Timothy, Paul spoke to Timothy again. And say, do not despise your youth because, uh, 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 you know, do not despise your youth because the call upon you is not about age. It's about him. When you speak, you represent him. When you look at the Bible, he called Jeremiah at the age of 19 and called other people at a very young age. And he told them one thing. One, do not be afraid. Two, do not allow anyone to despise you. So friends, be encouraged that even at this time, while we wait for the blessed hope and the appearing of the, of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, he gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his, that are his very own, eager to do what is good. The, Jesus Christ will return. Whether we believe it or not, whether we like it or not, Jesus Christ will return. I don't know uh, and I don't care what atheists say or other people say uh, that Jesus has taken too long. He will return. And when he does, every one of us will give an account for the things that we will have done. And therefore, we must always embrace and remember to serve him and to do what is good. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. Amen.